Lean St. James, Detroit Free Press. Hey, Jeff. Um, with, with Tyler's decision not to get vaccinated, how will you handle that, I guess, especially looking ahead to uh, your host road games in Montreal and it's kind of back to back? Uh, well, I'd start first by saying, um, you know, I, I Tyler's uh, a, a guy that I, I love as a person, love as a player. Um, I'm a big fan of Tyler. I think he's a, uh, a great teammate. And, um, you know, certainly Tyler, uh, the, the NHL uh, allowed our players to make decision on this. And, and that's the decision Tyler, Tyler's made and we respect it. Um, I, you know, obviously, we'd love to have everybody vaccinated because then you don't lose anybody at any point. But I certainly respect the decision. And, and how will I handle it? Um, other guys will get opportunity uh, when, when he cannot play. And that's just the, the reality of it. So there's not a whole lot more to the story than that. Um, uh, that's really the gist of it. Is going to be a, a tough one to fill, though, at home? I mean, he's, you talked about it yourself. He brings something kind of unique. I'm a big fan of Tyler uh, as a player, as I said earlier, and, and uh, certainly, um, you know, he brings a, a lot to the table. I think he's a he's a, a big piece of our puzzle. Um, I have for a long time thought that. So uh, certainly, for those games, we'll be missing a piece of the puzzle. Now, um, as as I've talked about lots, uh, that that brings opportunity for other guys, and other guys will have to step up in the, in that role. Just a Uh, you know, I've, I thought they both looked good. I'm, you know, obviously um, there's a progression uh, to, to get them both going full out, uh, but I thought they both looked good. I thought they've both done a good job through the course of the summer. Um, you know, I've been around the rink a lot. They've been around the rink a lot. I know the work they've put in, um, you know, and it's diligent uh, work that you have to put in to come back from the respective injuries, and I think they both are in a good spot right now, both mentally and physically, so I think that's great. Um, I like the two together. They're a pair that I'd like to keep together all season if I can. You know, obviously last Last year we started that way, but we couldn't finish because of the injury uh, to Tyler. I think Tyler uh, and Dylan complement each other. I also think uh, they have real good chemistry on and off the ice. So it's definitely a pair I'd like to, to see stay together. And then we're looking to see who earns the spot with them. And um, you know that'll be that'll be determined over time. Yeah, we're hoping uh, we're hoping to have him here uh, tomorrow. So we're hoping uh, you now. You still have to go through some process to get cleared to uh, be able to participate. So I don't have the timing on on when uh, when that'll happen, but we're hoping to have him here tomorrow. Okay, so he is in the U.S. Nope. Oh. Nope. Nope. We're hoping he gets here on a flight tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Yep. Next up, Ethan Sears, DetroitRedWings.com. Uh, hi, Jeff. Yeah. Um, Dylan seemed really impressed with uh, Mo Sider when we talked to him. I'm just kind of curious your uh, impressions with him from day one. Well, I mean, day one, you know, we didn't do a ton. Um, that that would be able to be unbelievable evaluation. I think the impression uh, probably that Dylan has and that I have is from not just today, but from, uh, you know, what Mo's done when he skated in, in the past, whether it be here or, or elsewhere. Um, you know, he's been skating the last few days with our guys, so I'm sure that, that affected Dylan. I, Moritz has a chance to be a really good player. And, you know, how good and how quickly, we'll see. Um, that, that just comes with time. But he's got a chance to be a really good player. He's big. Uh, he's smart. He's got confidence. Uh, he's got uh, some toughness to him. Um, he can play in a lot of situations. So I think he's got that opportunity to be a really good player. We're going to give him the opportunity to do that. And then he's got he's to grab it by the horn. Next up, Ted Colfin, Detroit News. Hey, good to see you. You too. Um, well, I certainly think, uh, you know, at the defense position, obviously uh, trading for a guy like Letty, who's been a top four defenseman in this league for a long time, um, you know, that adds a top four player. I think uh, the, re the, the closer, uh, the, the return of, of Danny DeKaiser to, to uh, closer to where he was before the surgery is an important piece of it, and, and he looks and feels good. You know, he's been a top four defenseman for a long time. Um, you know, I think other guys have opportunities to be top four D. I think we've got if, if Moritz Sider 
uh, shows himself to be an NHL player. If that happens, we have eight guys on the back end that have that have been, uh, you know, I'd say pretty regular NHL players over the last number of years. Um, if I include Lindstrom in that mix, who who started to show that last year, you know, so you got lots of competition and depth back there. And then up front, I think we got. Uh, it'll be interesting, Cam. Um, you know, we have guys both uh, young and old that are kind of vying for spots and. Um, you know, we, we haven't scored enough and that's not just on our forwards, but it's partially, uh, you know, on guys that to step up and, and, and uh, produce at a higher level. And so, uh, you know, part of that, that weighs on the power play. So we'll see which guys over the course of the next two and a half weeks grab spots. I'm really interested to watch it and see. You know, s simple, basic message that I think we've had in, in the past, and, and that's you know, there's certain non-negotiables um, on our hockey team, and and you got to make sure you work, you have to make sure you compete, you know, and 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 you have to make sure you execute, and, and execute can really show itself in practice and how you uh, do a drill, how you pass a puck, how you do those things. We're we're trying to be as perfect as possible out there, and so um, you know, I think that that was the message we talked about yesterday. Um, and then let's go. Let's get after it in day one, and, and let's just keep getting better every day. The last one, does it feel back to normal, kind of? You know what I mean? And this is your off here? I mean, like it was a couple of years ago? Or? Yeah, I, I think, you know, you feel you know, it's closer to that. I mean, obviously, I'm on a Zoom call with you guys. Uh, you could say there's some benefits to that, but uh, probably both ways. But, but you know, I mean, so there's some differences. Um, but, but being up here has been great. Um, uh, I personally love coming to Traverse City. Uh, my family lives up here. It's a, it's a great experience when we come up here. Um, it's great to, you know, to hit a different section of our fan base at times, too, and I think that's, that's an outstanding thing. So, um, you know, it's definitely feeling closer to normal, and, and certainly, you know, when we get back into buildings where there's fans in the stands, that'll, that'll be a, 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 you know, because we didn't get to experience that to the level that some of the playoff teams did. So that'll be a pretty uh, um, exciting and welcomed experience. Sounds good. Thanks for this, Jeff. Yep, thank you. Next up, Max Boltman, The Athletic. Hey, Jeff, I saw Morris taking some line rushes with, with Nick Levy, and I know it's day one, regardless of whether they actually play together uh, you know, in the regular season. What, what can he get out of spending some time you know, on, on the ice with Levy and as a pairing with now you've seen what Levy's seen? Well, I think you know certainly Nick has uh, has been around now for a while. He's he's got a veteran presence to him. He's a he's a really good skater. Um, but you know he's also come from a uh, from a team that that I think does it right as much as anybody in the NHL. They they their attention to detail is great. So I think he can uh, bring some of that wisdom not just to Cider but to other guys on our team. You know they've they've introduced some young defensemen there over the last couple of years uh, in in New York, and I think you know Leds has seen those guys develop. So I think he can impart some of that wisdom uh, to Sides as well. And and you know Sides is a, is a is a real smart, confident person too. And and uh, uh, I think there's probably give and take. I'm sure that there's some things that uh, some of our defensemen can can learn and, and through the interaction with with Moritz. So. Um, you know, th that, that's like you said, that's the pairing we had today, and we'll see what, what tomorrow brings. But we think it potentially could be a good pairing. Uh, I know you got to watch, um, I think, all the prospect tournaments. What, what did you make of Joe Galeno um, on the ice and obviously the physical gains that he's made over the last six months? Well, the physical gains are undeniable. He's, he's really made uh, himself uh, a man. He's turned his body into a pro body, uh, into an NHL body. He's way bigger and stronger than he was two years ago. So he can hold on to the puck. He can uh, defend down low. I think his defensive habits are really good. Um, you know, I was really impressed with him in the St. Louis game when that, when that game got pretty, uh, pretty rough. Uh, I thought he hung in there great, both him and Raymond. I thought for two young players, uh, they hung in there great. They took hits to make plays. They knew they were going to get hit. It was just the way the game was going. He kept his composure. He showed leadership. So I thought he, he did a real good job in that game. And just your kind of first impression of seeing him, I may have watched him over the years, but seeing him up close, Lucas. Um, you know, I, I would say uh I would say that, that the first game, uh, he wasn't as effective as the second game. And the second game, I thought he was uh, much more effective. And again, I thought it was really impressive that, you know, I, I don't know how many games he's been in that, that took that type of physical tone in his life. And, and I thought he did a great job of standing in there, um, made a number of plays. He's got a chance to be a really uh, smart, 
um, offensive player. You know, I think his his uh, his uh, hockey sense, his 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 competitiveness, those are probably two of his best attributes. So I'm I'm really in, intrigued to watch him play with uh, some of our. Uh, established players and see see uh, you know does he get exponentially better when he plays with those guys and we'll get a chance to see that in exhibition. Thanks, yep, thank you. Our last question, George Malik, the Malik Report. Hey, coach, I, I was wondering um, if you could talk about uh, you know winning the special teams battle, bringing in Alex Tangay um, as you look for secondary and tertiary scoring. Uh, what you're hoping that Alex might be able to impart over at least the first couple days. Of yeah, and I'd say they're probably two separate things. You know, winning the special teams battle is critical. I think in the NHL you win 76% of the games that you win the special teams battle. So it's a critical part that we need to get better at. It's an easy area for us to look at and say, how can we be a better hockey team, especially last year when we were, when we were in a number of close games. Uh, how do you turn those losses into wins? Well, you do it a lot of times on special teams. And certainly, um, you know, Alex can have a part in that, but the guys on the ice are going to have the real part, the real say on, on how much better the power play is, whether it's uh, the guys that were on it previous doing a better job or new players filling those roles. Those are the guys that are going to have the real impact on it. You know, I think what I was interested when I set out to hire a new assistant coach is I, I wanted to find somebody uh, who had – um, kind of an offensive background who who uh, could could help our players at all those little things offensively that that can lead to uh, being a little bit more successful. Um, but I would say not just from the offensive standpoint, from the complete game. You know, one of the things that I like about Alex is he's got uh, certainly strong beliefs on 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 things offensively, on on how to create offense, but he also uh, you know, he, he, he's won a Stanley Cup. He knows what it takes. He knows you have to be a complete player. He knows you have to play from both sides of the puck. And, and I think he was somebody who was able to do that and still produce offense. And that's the biggest challenge for offensive players is learn how to be that complete player and still produce the numbers. And so, you know, I think there's a lot of um, wisdom that he gained over his career uh, that he can help uh, pass down to our players. And so I'm excited about that. Um, well, I would say the thing about competition is, is you know, any team anywhere is always looking for somebody who, who can make them way better, you know. And, and so the, the thing I always say to guys that are trying to win spots, and I've said this from the time I was in junior all the way through the American League up into the NHL, is if, if you want to win a spot from a guy, you can't just be as good as him. you got to be way better than him. And so, um, you know, I think there's always competition. It's just the, the player has to show that they're going to really improve us. Now, with, with respect to Chase, uh, number one, I like his flow. I think his flow looks great, so it's something I'm super jealous of that I wish I could still I could still have. I used to have flow just like that back in high school, and uh, it was it was pretty pretty uh, I guess high end I would say. Um, number two, I thought he did a pretty good job. He's a big body. Um, he knows how to uh, he knows how to use his body. He knows he's got pretty good defensive instincts. Um, you know, I think he needs to make sure that he's an, an elite penalty killer because um, because you have to have a, a role if you're gonna if you're gonna earn your way onto that fourth line, um, not just being good enough five on five, but you got to be an elite penalty killer. You got to show you're gonna help us. How do you do that for us? Certainly, shot blocking is a key to the way we want to kill penalties in our zone. So he'll have to show he's an elite shot blocker, um, and then he's got to win faceoffs. Those are two things that at the fourth line center position you got to do great. You know, there's other guys vying for those spots as well. Carter Rowney's got experience. Mitch Stevens, a young player that thinks he's ready to take that step to a regular NHL player. Um, so we'll see where the competition goes. And I noticed that uh, a couple of times you guys had to do some laps. Uh, is this is uh, in theory a six-day training camp, but really there's only three days of instruction in the red and white game, and then there's two days of practice leading up to eight games and 12 nights. Is, is the emphasis there on pace from the start? We certainly want pace. Uh, we want pace in, in all our practices, and that's something that's important. You know, there's times where, um, you know, I'm a big believer in, in immediate consequence, and if we're not doing things right, then, then there's an, sometimes an immediate consequence of skating as well. And then we also play small games sometimes where the losers skate. So there's differing reasons why do, we do those things. But uh, certainly pace is something that's really important to us. Thank you for your time. Thanks, guys.